today on an all-new Dr. Phil. Her mom went from loving grandma to paranoid, aggressive, and on the run from the law. I'm running through the woods. There had been an old tent that a homeless person had had, and I roll up in it. She was telling patients they were being poisoned. She did call you saying she was being murdered. There was somebody after me. You said the doctor was giving you a shot to try to kill you. I did say that. I did think he was. Does that sound rational? Let's do it. Is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. Today's going to be a changing day in your life. Five, four. I am not giving up on you. Well, my guest today, Sarah, is a successful attorney from Florida who says over the past year, she has watched her 67-year-old mother, Chris, go from a warm and loving grandparent to paranoid, aggressive, on the run from the law, whose behavior is so troubling, she was detained in a high security facility for the mentally ill for almost a month. Now, can a person literally change overnight and become unrecognizable to those who love them the most? Or has this been a long time in the making? Well, I'm gonna meet Chris later to try and get to the bottom of what she's thinking and feeling. But first, I wanna hear from Sarah, who says her mother's behavior is so alarming that she's uncomfortable letting her two young daughters near the grandmother they dearly love. Something very unusual has happened to my mother over the past year. Last summer, my mom's behavior began to get bizarre. Hey there, it's your mama. I really feel like my life is in danger. She became obsessed with watching a particular cable news channel. My mom wrote a manifesto to Joe Biden and was obsessed with getting it to him. My mother's reason for writing the letter is that she felt that I was brainwashed because I didn't believe her same political views. Her belief was that immediately when the letter would go out that she was going to get a return phone call. That made her sleep with the phone should Joe Biden call her. She would go to places and ask people to fax it for her. She believed that as she was sending out this letter it was being intercepted. My mother's behavior became so bizarre that she ended up going missing for two days. My mother went missing on August 29th. She actually went to my aunt's house in an attempt to have them deliver this letter to Joe Biden. My aunt refused to send the letter. My mother got upset and ended up leaving her house. We did not hear from my mom at all for 36 hours. At 4 a.m. Monday morning, I received a phone call from my mother. She had found a tent and spent the two days kind of hiding out from them in the woods. She believed that they was some sort of affiliation with Trump. I just couldn't even believe the information that she was telling me. She had never behaved this way before. I picked her up and took her to the emergency room where she was Baker acted. She was diagnosed with acute psychosis and refused medication. It has been about six months since my mother has been released. She has continued with her belief that there is a conspiracy and was part of the reason why she was Baker acted. My mom is angry with me for not helping her get out of the hospital. She does not feel there's anything wrong with her. Dr. Phil, I really need your help to figure out what has happened to my mom. Okay, Sarah, it's good to meet you. Nice to meet you. Now, did this really come completely out of the blue or was she starting to unravel a little bit in her thought processes before, in looking back? In, in looking back, I, I first noticed um, a change in her around the beginning of COVID, March. Um, she became obsessed with the cable news station and she had, I had never even remember her watching TV growing up and she right. was obsessed with it. And then in August is when I first realized that things were really getting strange. But on the 29th of August at 6 a.m. she's headed to your house, right? Correct. She's, she's getting there. At 9 a.m. she arrives and she's at her sister's house with the first manifesto and and her sister refuses to send it, right? Correct. And here's some of what she was saying. 
I've never paid attention to or really had an idea of what was going on in politics my whole life. When Trump got elected, I woke up and Sarah hates bullies. It, it came to me that she would never be a Trump supporter unless she was brainwashed or hypnotized. Uh, I would like to ask for a whistleblower protection investigation into this. My other idea I'd like to get out, uh, there is a way to get rid of Trump. What if everyone who doesn't like Trump dump their stock for say two months? If you find this has merit, please make sure it gets to Joe Biden. I woke up last night and had the most terrifying thought of all. What if news stations never got my ranting? What if somehow they were able to tag me as never having used a computer? I should have heard something by now. Now, okay, some of this is people get really exercised about their political beliefs. I've got that. Right. The overarching concern to me here is the grandiosity right. expressed that we've got to get this to Joe Biden. What if the networks don't jump on this? What if they tag me? It's like she's grandiose enough to think that Joe Biden cares what some lady from the suburbs has right. to say when they're surrounded by the top advisors in the world, Correct. whether you agree with them or not, they're the top advisors in the world, that she would think, okay, I woke up terrified. What if the news stations never got my ranting? Right. And that's where it crosses the line from being just a even a political zealot to personalizing it to the point that she's losing contact with reality. Correct. And in a, entering a fantasy world. Correct. Now, at 2 p.m., she's reported missing after not arriving to your house, Correct. right? Mm -hmm. And the fact of the matter is, she had paid a stranger $100 to call a cab right. to take her four different places to post copies of the manifestos to major news networks. And then at seven, she calls you from a store and says things did not feel safe at home. Right. And then on Sunday at 9 a.m., Florida PD finds her car in a parking lot. It's towed. Then the next day, Monday, 4 a.m., she calls you and asks to be picked up in front of the store. And you very rightly called for some help. My concern is that we get hands on her and we get her safe because I had no idea what had happened at that okay. point. So I called the police. They'd stay with her. All right. So, and they get there and at 5 a.m. she tells them she slept in the woods. Right. Uh, and so she goes to the ER, gets a physical exam, and she's Baker acted that morning. Correct. And But she refuses medical treatment. Right. Even evaluation. Right. Now, she's in there for a while. You know, five days later, she's telling patients that they're being poisoned. Right. Injected with medication after becoming violent. Right. So they eventually had to restrain her to give her an injection of, of a psychotropic medication, right? Right. Okay. Then on the night, she was transferred to ICU. Why was she transferred to ICU? Do you know? We received a call that she was transferred to ICU because she was found um, non-responsive. They did a CT scan. They just diagnosed her as being catatonic. You know, generally when people are Baker Acted or involuntarily committed on a 5150 or Baker Act, whatever it's called in a given state, it's for 72 hours right. unless they find something really wrong. And it's very rare that they ever get held for even 72 hours. So for them to hold her right. for 16 days, they had to have decided that she was really out of touch and a danger to herself or others. Why do you think she might respond to me? Well, this is a neutral place. You're, you're a neutral individual. Everybody else has you know, involvement in it. And so why I reached out to you in particular is because I've seen shows that you've done where you listen to people sure. and you investigate their concerns and you address them, you know, and if there's any validity to their concern, then you'll, you know, acknowledge that. She has some 
legitimate concerns that she is expressing or reacting to in an illegitimate way. Correct. She was telling patients they were being poisoned. She did have to be restrained to be medicated. She did call you and leave voicemails and all, but saying she was being murdered and didn't feel safe. And right. now Sarah says watching her mom detach from reality like this has just been heartbreaking. And Chris maintains that that's just not true, that she is the same person she's always been. And I'm going to let her explain that to me right after the break. I knew that the police were there because of me. I'm running through the woods. There had been an old tent that a homeless person had had, and I like roll up in it, and I'm trying to cover myself with palm branches, and I can hear, it sounds like helicopters going by, and I was so scared. Tomorrow. Former 90210 star Anna Lynn McCord opens up about being diagnosed with dissociative identity disorder. If all this had to happen to me in order for me to sit here across from Dr. Phil. Was it freeing for you? The invisible chains are gone. You know, this is it. This is me. I was my six-year-old self, my eight-year-old self, a 13-year-old self. Are you coexisting with any of your alters today? He just digs right in there, Dr. Phil. <laughs> That's tomorrow. Then on Thursday. I would never hurt my own son. Was their baby she shaken to death. I think Steven's girlfriend did it. You believe she's going to let your son take the fall for it? That's Thursday. I'm here to find out what has happened to my mother. Over the past year, there's been a major change in her behavior and her relationship with everyone in the family has suffered. My fear is that my mother will blame us for what's happened and continue to refuse treatment. She has continued with her belief that there is a conspiracy. My concern is that depending upon what she hears from Dr. Phil, she may believe that perhaps he's part of the conspiracy as well. Well, Sarah says that she just really no longer recognizes her mother, Chris, who has engaged in behavior so troubling that her family felt they had no choice but to have her placed under involuntary psychiatric hold. Now, Chris says she still cannot understand why they would do that to her when all she was doing was just trying to live her life. I do not believe I'm crazy. I wrote a letter to a cable news station because I wanted to put my idea out there. I believed that Trump supporters were brainwashed and I asked for whistleblower protection, but I felt that there was something stopping me from getting my idea out. August 29th, I woke up and I said, I'm just gonna drive to my sister's house and I will have my sister send the letter from her computer. I go to my sister's and it wouldn't go through the internet. She read it and she said, this sounds crazy. And I left. I go to a place to try to send this out on the internet. And I said to the girl, can you do this for me? She tries and she said, it will not go through. And I got scared. All of a sudden I'm like, oh my God, they know where I am because I've been trying to fax it from here. And then I asked this guy, would you call me a taxi? The driver took me to six different places to try to fax. I end up at a little phone store and she said to me, it went through. And I was like, oh my God, okay. And I said, hey, can I use your phone and let my daughter know? So I call and I said, hey, Sarah. And she said, mama, where are you? And I said, I'm at the beach. And I hang up the phone and I just know, and I start walking real fast and all these police cars pull up like fast. And I didn't turn around, I just heard them and just walked. And then I was really scared. I knew that the police were there because of me. I do not understand or what was after me, but I did think it was something to do with the Trump campaign. So I ran into the woods. There had been an old tent that a homeless person had had, and I like roll up in it, and I'm trying to cover myself with palm branches, and I can hear, it sounds like helicopters going by, and I was so scared. 
In the morning I woke up, I felt safe and really excited. I fixed the tent and I made the cutest little home in there. And there were these pools of water and I literally took a bath. I washed my clothes and hung them up to dry and I had like an amazing date. Monday morning I wake up and I knew it's time to call my daughter. I hear her voice. Mama, where are you? It was a little bit surprising that anybody would be worried about me. People know how I am. I'm impulsive and I swim naked in the river. I do not think I am mentally ill. Well, Chris, it's good to meet you. Good to meet you. Now, you've been involuntarily committed, right? Um, I was Baker acted, yes. Right. You didn't want to go in. Hell no. So that's involuntary. I would call it that, yes. Yeah. And you have no idea why. I do have an idea why. Okay, tell me. Because I had an idea that I wanted to get out there, and somebody must have wanted that idea not out there. Let me tell you how I approach this. I'm very open-minded. Mm -hmm. Can you be? Yeah. Uh, because I, I, if there is something that's distorting the way you see the world or the way you think about it, you'd want to know, right? I would want to know, sure. Explain to me, and I don't mean this in an insulting way, mm -hmm. but why would they, whoever they is, Correct. why would they particularly care what you thought? That's the big question, isn't it? Why would they care? Well, they wouldn't. I would think so. You wrote a manifesto that you said had important information for Joe Biden, mm -hmm. right? I wrote, I wrote my idea. I had an idea. I was concerned about my child, that she had crossed over to being a Trump supporter, which is her right, but it didn't make sense to me. You said divine intervention told you to write Biden a letter. I didn't even write Biden a, re a letter. The manifesto is my opinion. It's okay. for Joe Biden. Right, but I said, if you, if you find this has merit, send it to Joe Biden. He said, I woke up last night and had the most terrifying thought of all. What if the news station never got my ranting? What did you expect was going to happen? I thought, I just want to put this idea out there. I never got concerned until I never heard back. And then I thought, maybe they're not even getting it. That but, but my question is, why would you think you should hear back? Just as a simple courtesy, hey, Chris, dumb idea. That's all I wanted to hear. Okay. Well, what was life like for Chris in the mental facility where she spent 16, and she describes them as traumatic days, in what she describes as a, quote, rubber room? We'll talk about that when we come back. They drag me in my room and pin me down screaming, and I get the shot. I want to understand how anyone could bait correct me. How can doctors do that in the United States of America? It's nonstop drama. I'm here because I want to dig into it. Well, you're barely here because you tried to leave already. All month long. Are y'all smoking and drinking together? Yes. Why is she saying yes and you're saying no? On Dr. Phil. Is there anything that I say to you that you're not going to argue with? Real people. Alexandria has gone to the emergency room 600 times. Sometimes it can be like three, four times a week. If I don't go to the hospital, something is going to happen to me. My 11-year-old daughter is dealing with a severe eating disorder. Here's her daily schedule. Wake up at 5 to exercise. Make school lunch that I don't eat. Get dressed while exercising. Run the stairs. Real talk. You want to force me to believe that the son that I gave birth to is a woman. That's not what... Excuse me, I'm not done. You have to let someone else speak. Dr. Phil May. As she said to you, I hope you burn in hell. And I'll get up and walk off the stage right now because what you're not going to do, you're not going to lie. Mom. 
my mom calling me from the facility. She would leave me voicemails about various people being in there trying to kill her. Hey there, it's your mama. I need help bad. I really feel like my life is in danger. The doctor tried to give me a shot today to kill me, and there's a murderer in here that tried to kill me too, twice. One time she left me a voicemail that said I was supposed to get Judge Judy to represent her. Hey, could you request a send you a copy that the doctor has of my manifesto and I would like to request Judge Judy as the judge that hears our case. It was heartbreaking to hear these voicemails. Well, Sarah, an attorney from Florida, says her mother, Chris, who has no history of mental illness, is reported to have experienced a psychotic episode last summer, uh, which led to her spending about three weeks in a mental facility against her wishes. Here's what Chris has to say about what she calls an unwarranted hospitalization. Sarah drives me to the hospital. This doctor approached me and said, what's this, like, things you've been writing? I absolutely intuitively knew this was bad news. It was about the third day when this doctor said, you have to take this shot. They tried to give me the shot, and I ran to the adjoining room, and there's nothing but a shower there, and it had like three inches of water. I'm sitting with my arms wrapped around my knees, like in the corner going, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die. After a couple hours of laying there not moving, I realized no one's coming to get me. The day when I really did get the shot, I walked into the living room, and my friend was getting forced to take medication. I took my hand and I flicked a little cup, spilled on the nurse's shoe, and boom, four or five of them are on me and they drag me in my room and pin me down screaming and I get the shot. It was an antipsychotic shot. That night, I could hear Trump and Putin and I thought if I crawl under there, I'll be shot. It was nuts. I want to say what happened to me was horrific and People don't believe it really happened. I'm still trying to understand why my family didn't try to get me out. Dr. Phil, I want to understand how anyone could bait correct me. I'm a 67-year-old great-grandmother with no history of mental illness. How can doctors do that in the United States of America? That's, I said that's a fair question, and, and I want to yeah. talk about that, because I think in America, depriving someone of their liberty is, uh, comes at a very high standard, as well it should be. Right. You said the doctor was giving you a shot to try to kill you. Does that sound rational? No, of course not. But you, you did say that. I did say that. Okay, that's all, that's all I wanted Correct. to say. Correct, absolutely. All right. And, and, and did, at the time, I did think he was. I thought everybody would realize there was somebody after me. Did you steal Trump signs from people's yards? I took, I took two Trump signs okay, so and that's changed a yes. them. Yes, that's a yes. Okay, and you did go into the woods for two days. Correct. Okay, and uh, you did say that you were saying and everyone else had been brainwashed. Huh? Me or your family and... I, I, that was what started the whole thing, my concern about you being a Trump supporter. Did you say that Sarah had crossed over to the dark side and become a Trumper? Well, um, I did say that. Okay. In the man, it, and in did the you tell other actually, patients in the facility that they were being poisoned? No. I never told anybody that. I didn't believe anybody was being poisoned. Did you knock medication out of a nurse's yes. hand and spill it on her shoe when she yeah. was trying to give it to another patient, not you? It was my friend who didn't want it. Chris Husband's going to join us next. He says he noticed a startling change in his wife's behavior months before she was Baker acted. So could this behavior be the key to unraveling this family crisis? I'm going to be delving into that right after the break. Now, my relationship with Chris is in a rocky place. She believes there may be a conspiracy against her. She thinks that I was brainwashed and I had something to do with her. Being Baker acted, it scares me. 
I'm happy that we're having this conversation. I've got a secret with Robin McGraw. We're tackling the secret to understanding your fertility. With reproductive endocrinologist, Dr. Lauren Sundheimer. Getting pregnant isn't as easy as they made it seem in sex ed back in the day. It's about one in eight couples who are infertile. There's a good chance that you or somebody you know is affected. There's just not enough conversations going on about it. We start talking about it more and more. People realize they're not alone and that there's things we can do. Available on Stitcher and Apple Podcasts. Well, I'm joined today by Sarah, who says her mother, Chris, uh, apparently suffered a psychosis, which led her to being institutionalized. Now, Chris would disagree with that. uh, But while Chris maintains this whole affair is a huge misunderstanding, her husband, Christopher, says he is very concerned. I've been married to Chris for almost 22 years. Before this year, we had a very good marriage. She was a very loving mother and wife. When I noticed changes in her behavior, it was about two to three months before disappearing. She would stay up late at night. One night she wrote a will. She started writing papers to a 24-hour news broadcast, and she was asking me to send them out. I reluctantly was trying to help her fax it. Once I found out that she was found in the woods, I was relieved that she had been found. She was by herself, no phone, scared to death, huddled under a blanket. It broke my heart. She had never done anything like that before. Now my relationship with Chris is in a rocky place. She thinks that I was brainwashed and I had something to do with her being Baker acted. I know my wife resents me for not helping get her out. I don't know how to deal with the situation. So I have moved out of the house. It's really hard on me. I don't know how to act sometimes and it scares me. What's the biggest change you've noticed in Chris? I still don't think she believes I had nothing to do with her being Baker acted, that she thinks I'm part of the plot and it hurts. Mm-hmm. Is that true? No. I can assure you, neither one of these people initiated a Baker Act because they don't have the authority. Mm-hmm. Um, when the police are called to a scene or they come to a scene and, and they, just in their lay opinion, believe that somebody is uh, having trouble uh, separating fantasy from reality or they would be a danger to themselves or others if they were left to their own devices then they call, it's named something different in different states, but it's a a psychiatric mobile response team Mm -hmm. gets involved and they make a determination and they can take them to the hospital and then it has to go before a judge and and you know your your family or neighbors just can't decide that you need treatment and put you in. It's not up to them. And they couldn't stop it if they wanted to stop it once it starts. It's Correct. not up to them. I never was involved with law enforcement or anybody. Well, that's not true. Your car was towed. You went missing for two days. That was reported. The system was triggered. And mm-hmm. once that happens, then you're in the system. Right. I, yeah. When I got out, I did not think at first that it was them. I was just trying to find out how it happened mm-hmm. or understand it. Let's talk about your life in general. How has she been as a mother, Sarah? She's an amazing mother. So you 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 won the mom lottery. Absolutely. Just every, every step of the way. Yep. And let's put that in context. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, you said on the tape you're, what, 67, Seven. years, 67 years old. Mm-hmm. And you've had decades of being a wonderful, productive citizen, a loving mother, caring, supportive. That's what defines you, right? Correct, correct. And so what's going on right now, can we agree it's an aberration? (laughs) Being in all of this drama and up and down, this ain't you. No, and it wasn't any fun for any of us. Of course not, but especially you. Correct. And I hate that for you. Yeah. But let let me tell you why I think it's important to look at the continuity of your life. Okay. Uh, And we'll talk about that right after the break. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. A TV star's battle with dissociative identity disorder. 
I'm fully revealing everything now. Are you coexisting with any of your alters today? That's tomorrow. Prior to COVID, my mother and I were very, very close. We talk on the phone multiple times a day. It was last March, we had this major argument and I remember saying, mom, what has happened to you? She's a wonderful grandmother, but this obsession has overtaken her and I'd be concerned to have her around my children. I stand good with my relationship with my daughter. In your 60 plus years before now, did you ever write a manifesto to a United States president? No, I, I never had the concerns I had with Trump. Did you ever think at 40 or 50 or 60 that you would be someone that would be involuntarily committed to a mental institution? No. So absolutely inconsistent with who you are and what your behavior is. So that tells me um, that whatever it is, something has gone amiss here, Correct. right? Something's, something's, something's not wrong. Right. Yeah, and we don't know what it is. So Correct. Why did this occur? <laughs> you got me. And, well, but you have to own some of this. Okay. Because there was a substantial change in your behavior. You know, I kind of made a list of things. Um, you, you were you were stealing Trump signs. You're, well, you're, I took two Trump signs and okay. just changed them. I, I turned them into Biden signs. Sorry. Yeah. Correct. Don't bake rack me for that. Okay, and I don't think anyone would in isolation. But you then write a manifesto, and you're really, really zealous about it getting to the Joe news. Biden. No, I promise you. you. I know you wanted it to go to the news network, <laughs> right. but it, it it was for Joe Biden, and you also had a plan to crash the stock market uh, to get rid of Trump. I didn't think I would crash the stock market. But that's and, what you said. Right, but what I, here's what I said. If all of the Democrats pulled their money out of the stock market for a month, it would go down. So it was nothing but an idea. I did not think I could crash the stock market mm -hmm. at all. I know you, you don't think that it was justified that we should have been concerned about you being gone, but we were. And, Why? And that, because, how many times have you ever gone missing? How many times have I ever gone missing? What is missing, Sarah, to be... I, I see you, I talk to you in the morning, I call you, I And call tell me Chris, you're on the way to my house. And, and you say, Mama, stop over. And I said, okay, I'll stop over. I'll be and there. I was ready to go, okay. and I thought I'll go and try <laughs> mailing this I out again. I get a call from Sarah that you never showed up, and it's, you know, and that she's concerned, and she's scared to death. Well, everybody I'm, knew I didn't have my and phone. I forgot death, my phone at home. I know you go yard sale, and I didn't think it was a big deal at the time, you know. It and, wasn't um, a big deal. I, I forgot my phone at home, so I have no phone, and, and I would have called you. So I go and try to mail it. That's what was happening. Okay, but you didn't. You, you left your car. You got a cab. I went in a store and tried to fax it out, and it wouldn't go through. And the woman comes and says, I have never seen this before. It always goes through. And, and I said, try it again. Try, there's two numbers. She looked up the numbers and said, there is a block. This will not go through. And I was like, oh, my God. That's what scared me. Now, I wasn't see, scared that, before that. Why we're here is because no one can talk to you about anything, and we can't share our feelings. Or fe I mean, all you do, you, you browbeat the family over your involvement and what did you do, and everybody, I'm, I'm terrified to say something that's going to upset you about what I did or what I didn't do, and, I, and you have blamed me. At one point, you thought I was the mastermind behind the Baker Act. Honey, listen to me. I put you through law school, and I'm thinking when, when, when they hauled me away, I thought, my daughter is going to be banging on I doors. Get my you out, though. No, but honey, I didn't know. How do I know? No, I, I am so sorry to but, both of you. But, yeah, I mean. I know I'm pushy. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, I'm going to talk about what I think has gone on and what I think needs to go on. The things that you have said 
that I've listened to you say on voicemails, the doctor's trying to give me a shot and kill me. There's a murderer in here that's trying to kill me. Uh, the fact that they found you unresponsive uh, in the hospital, the fact that you hallucinated about Trump and, and Putin, uh, which you say was after the shot, which could I, be... A, I, I was psychotic after the shot. Which could be a reaction to the shot. I, I, I don't know. It, but it was all, caused by the shot. All of these things... Well, don't discount everything else I said for that one point. I, I gave you that point. It could be a reaction to the shot. Okay. But you can't discount the rest of everything that I'm saying. You were behaving in ways that were upsetting. You did go missing based on the pattern of your life. You're a very reliable woman. Mm -hmm. You, If you say you're going to be somewhere, you show up. And when you don't, that's out of pattern for you. When they find your car abandoned, that's out of pattern for you. And then when they find out you've been living in the woods, rolled up in an old tent, covering yourself up with leaves because you think they are after you, that is cause for concern. That's how you get Baker acted. All of those things taken as a, as a pattern and looked at as a whole say, this is someone we need to evaluate and see if, if she's okay or was she just drunk or what? We, we just really don't know. If you want this to come to an end, mm -hmm. if you want this drama chapter to come to an end I in do. your life, then I think you need to step up and say, I don't know, but I want to have myself evaluated mm -hmm. neurologically mm -hmm. and psychologically, but neurologically to see if my brain patterns are disrupted. A lot of people think mental illness is psychological when oftentimes it's neurological. It's the electronic activity in your brain Correct. that's been disrupted, and it can come from a number of things. And if you recognize that these two people love you and care about I you, and they, they want to walk through this with you just to evaluate it, and if they say, you know, no, she just kind of has some unusual thinking, then fine, go on about your business. But get the evaluation. I'm happy to do and, that. And see yeah, if I've... see if if there are things that can be done and need to be done. I think that there's probably a pretty simple explanation and a pretty fundamental fix to whatever might be going on here. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you how all of that happens and a big reason why it should happen right after the break. <laughs> Want to know what's coming up on Dr. Phil? Visit our website and subscribe to our newsletter. You'll get weekly updates, live strategies, and exclusive video that you won't find anywhere else. Plus, on drphil.com, you can see sneak previews of upcoming shows. Log on today. I think you need to have a full workup of lab work done, and mm -hmm. they need to look real hard at heavy metals. Because sometimes we pick up in water supply or through cosmetics or whatever, it's astounding how quickly you can get heavy metals into your bloodstream, which can really change your brain chemistry. Mm -hmm. um, but and then they need to do uh, a, a brain scan, right? And and see if the neurotransmitters in your brain are communicating the way they should be, mm -hmm. which is very correctable if if not. And then they need to see if there is anything psychological uh, that you could be helped with in in terms of your thinking. Will you actively participate in this? Uh, yep. And do you believe me when I tell you these two I did already, not have the authority or the power to Baker Act you? I do believe that, and I believe them. I, I have a colleague here um, in L.A. that I believe is the leading brain expert mm -hmm. in the country. It's Dr. Daniel Amen. Uh -huh. uh, he's head of the Amen Clinics, and... He has the largest database of brain scans 
in the world. I think it's up to 165,000 now. He's one that did the CTE research for the NFL on brain injuries. And I would be more than happy to arrange for you to go to the Amen Clinics and see Dr. Amen while you're here, like tomorrow. Yes, that would if, work. I'll, if you would like yes. to do that. No, I'd, I'd love to do that. that. Would be... You've come a long way. Thank you. Right, thank you. You can relax and know that we have a plan in place and just enjoy each other for an evening. Mm -hmm. Know we got a plan in place and we're going to work forward. Thank you. Okay? Thank you. Does that work? Yes. Okay, work? Thank you. Good, good. <laughs> You did exactly what you told me. I asked you if you would be open-minded. You said I would. You did. I am. And thank you for having the integrity to do what you said. All right. And I hope I did what I said. Yep, you did. All thank right. you. All right. I want to thank all of my guests today, and a special thanks to Dr. Daniel Lehman uh, for uh, working with Chris and getting this work up and giving her the information so she knows what to work with. And hopefully it's something very simple, if anything at all. Uh, for more information about today's show, you can log on to drphil.com, and you guys know where to find me. Uh, and you can find me on Facebook, where we'll be talking about this and anything else that's uh, on your mind. We'll see you next time. So long. <laughs>